Hi guys, it's Nicolette again. So today we're going to be talking a little bit about the offer to purchase, also known as the OTP. Now, the OTP basically is a document and it's actually a contractual document that you're going to be presented with the moment you decide that you are willing now to make an offer on a property that you've probably viewed or you've seen before and you now want to make an offer to buy this house. Let's say, for instance, the house is going at 600,000 Rand and you have decided, you know what, I can raise 600,000 Rand. You've done your calculations on the, on the, on the um, bond calculator and you feel that actually at 600,000 Rand, I can afford this house and I'm sure that a bank is willing to give me this amount of money. Right. Most of us, when we do put down purchase to offers, we assume that we are in the right financial space to be able to afford a certain house at a certain price. Now, the most important thing about the offer to purchase that we need to remember that it is a contractual document. And the contents of that document are very, very important and you need to be clear on them. And now the reality is that most of us have never really had the experience of buying a house before. Or the people that are in our lives have also never bought houses before. Most black people don't buy houses. I mean, our parents didn't buy houses. They built their houses from scratch, right? So they didn't need funding from the uh, government and when, or from the banks. And when they did need funding from the banks, they probably used personal loans to be able to get the monies for them to build their houses. Now we've got the opportunity as a new generation to be able to go out to the bank and get a home loan. Now, the most important thing about the offer to purchase is the contents of what is in there and some of the clauses that you need to be very aware of. And the one that I want to specifically zoom into today is a suspensive clause. I mean, it's got me into trouble once. And since that day, I've made it my point to always read up on it, understand what it actually means and what it actually says. Now, the suspensive clause, the one thing that a lot of real estate agents do not tell you is the fact that you are allowed to make amendments and edits to that suspensive clause or that OTP. So if anything that is in there that you are not happy with, you are allowed to make an amendment and edit it. It is then the seller's account, the seller's um, um, choice to then accept the offer at your edits or your amendments. Because at the end of the day, the seller has an opportunity to accept your offer. If the seller says, no, I'm actually not agreeing with this person's edits or this person's amount of money that they're putting on the table, they've got every right to say no and reject your offer. So what do you need to do as a person who is the purchaser or the buyer? You need to find a way to protect yourself. Now, I'm talking about this, thinking of a story that I've, I've just dealt with with a friend of mine who found herself in a situation where she went out and, 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 and put an offer to purchase or signed an offer to purchase for a certain amount of money. Let's say it's 600,000 rand. Went to the bank. The bank then said, we can only grant you 95% of the home loan, which then means she now needs to pay the transferring fees or the transferring costs to the lawyers and has to find a way to raise the, the balance of the 5% to be able to buy this house. Now, the most important thing in the offer to purchase is to read what it actually says. Usually the offer to purchase in the suspensive clause will say to you, you are liable to, um, um, you are signing this document in light of the fact that you are able to raise a home loan or a bond or a mortgage at um, from any of, of this amount of money, which is, they say, the 600,000 rand, um, from any of the South African banks and you know that there isn't anything that is standing in your way from really getting that bond, i.e. things like tax, um, tax clearances, maybe you haven't been filing your tax returns and all sorts of other things. But really the most important thing is the fact that you need to read what the words actually say because usually what it says is that you should get a bond at any bank at any interest rate and at any period. Now, that is a very dangerous place to be if you have signed an offer to purchase because what it actually means, which is the same situation that happened to me, was that a bond was granted by one of the banks at 30 years and at a very high interest rate. And when I looked at it, it did not make financial sense for me to find myself in that uh, signing that bond um, 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 approval. But the reality is that the real estate agent and the seller now have a right to come and claim their money, their commission, and loss of income while the house was then taken off the market purely because I had said that I'm willing to get the bond at any cost. Basically, that's what the offer to purchase says in that suspensive clause if those words are put in that manner. But they say that you are willing to get the bond at any bank, at any interest rate, in any period. That is very, very important that you do edit that and you are allowed to say, no, I want it at these specific banks, maybe you're choosing two or three banks, at this interest rate and at this period of time. So it's very important that you remember that. But also, what this girl, this young girl, or this friend of mine found herself in a situation of was that the offer to purchase said that it, it must be at a certain amount, which was 600,000 Rand, 
or less. Which means if the bank says we are willing to give you a home loan of 90%, for instance, or 95% as in her case, you know, she now has to raise the balance of that amount of money. And it's not usually a, a situation where people have that amount of money because you already are paying the transfer, the transfer cost of the lawyers. You're already paying the bond registration fees, the initiation fees. And sometimes you need to raise um, 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 the insurance amount from the, for the first month. So these are some of the things that you really need to be zooming into and understanding. Another part of the um, um, bond, which is uh, of the OTP, which you need to really look into is when, what does it actually say about when you move in and who pays for what when you do move in or when the bond, uh, um, the house gets transferred. For instances, um, when I bought my house in December in 2016, the transfer was really swift. It was really quick. And luckily for me, because I didn't need to move in and um, I didn't take occupation of the house um, I, it, and I had a rental, a, a tenant already in, in the place, it was very easy. By the time this thing got transferred to me and the bond money was already sent to them, there was no need for me to be paying any occupational, um, um, any occupational rent or interest rent or whatever it's called. But what usually happens is that sometimes you find a situation where, you know, the it takes long for the transfer to be um, 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 done by the by SARS and the guys who do the transfers to a point where you need not need to move in into this property. You end up having being have, end up being liable to pay occupational rent to the buyer to the seller while you wait for the transfer to actually happen. So you need to also think of those things. You are allowed to edit it as, a, as I said in the first place. What you put on the table as your offer to the seller is what you are putting on the table and you need to be clear on that. And they've got every right to either reject or accept your offer including your edits and your amendments or you guys can negotiate on those and that's really important that you need to just always keep at the back of your mind. Mwah.